All right, so we are. Uh, uh, my name is Klaus, uh, Elon Svad, uh, Letharian, uh, Twitter, and uh, DO. And uh, my name is Dick Olson. I'm at Dick Olson on Twitter and on Dixon underscore on D.O. Um, de developer at Al Jazeera down in Qatar, originally coming from Sweden and uh, Node 1. So that's where I'm from. I am uh, CAJX in real life, Twitter, and uh, Drupal.org. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are uh, going to talk uh, about relation module. Uh, relation, uh, relationships uh, were a thorn in my side since 2005 when we tried to run a reverse bound uh, tree, uh, for a module uh, implementing uh, a generic relationship API, uh, but it didn't uh, uh, go anywhere uh, until uh, last year when at uh, DrupalCon San Francisco, Ben Clown and myself uh, had a uh, most uh, fruitful uh, dinner when we have uh, figured out uh, how uh, could we build uh, symmetric uh, relations and everything else just followed it uh, from that. That was pretty much the uh, history, and I am going to uh, let the other guys speak because uh, something marvelous happened as well. Uh, this is a country project that actually has a lot of uh, contributors. Usually country projects uh, are a one-man mission. Uh, these uh, excellent gentlemen uh, are uh, maintainers, and we have uh, more. We have like five or six people uh, actively contributing to relation. All right, I see even more people have showed up, so I'm just going to say once again that there's overflow space out in the hall with screens and speakers, so if you get tired of standing, you can go out in the hall and I hope there's a seat left there. Yeah, there's screens and audio. Uh, so, uh, the relation module. If you want to be uh, really harsh, you could say that what we're going to present today is absolutely nothing new at all. Uh, but hopefully you'll have uh, you'll find some use for it as well. Uh, but uh, there are uh, there's a uh, a traditional solution, which uh, many of you probably know about as the reference module. Uh, it consists of two submodules. So you can relate things to nodes or users. And the fundamental problem that is solved by this traditional solution is uh, that they need to link from one object to another. And while this has served very well and is a good solution for that specific problem, it's not quite enough for what we want to accomplish. Uh, so first of all, you can't relate to any other entities than those two that are hard-coded into the module. It's users and nodes, and if you want to relate to uh, comments, to uh, products from uh, the commerce project, or to a uh, taxonomy, to a term, or any other entity that's custom-made for some purpose, uh, then you'd have to copy the entire module and rewrite it to, to suit that purpose. Uh, also, it's strictly uh, directional and uh, binary, so you can only relate from one thing to another. Uh, even though you can have uh, multiple field values, it's still always from A to B. And never uh, you can never go back and you can never have a symmetric relationship between several different entities. Uh, the limited the storage module uh, storage model is also somewhat limited we'll talk a bit uh, more about that later and you also it's also complicated to add uh, additional information to the relationship if you want to emulate something like uh, Facebook friends or something then you would need to have uh, an extra text field on for example the user to describe uh, the type of relationship and all the metadata would have to go on either of the uh, either source or the target, which doesn't really make sense and would clutter the interface. <coughs> so, uh, on the first problem, the solution is that we have a more generalized framework so that you can relate to any entity at all. So all of the previously mentioned comments and uh, pro 
uh, commercial products and all that. And if you write a custom entity for any reason, that should work without any problems as well. Just fine. And uh, for the second problem, where uh, since you attach a field to the source, you would have to uh, have a similar field on the target if you wanted to relate backwards as well. And the solution to this that we have is that we add an intermediate entity. The, the relation module defines an entity called relation. And then you relate everything to this relation entity instead of directly relating the entities to each other. We have, uh, for the storage module, uh, the storage model that's uh, used by the references system uh, becomes fairly limited, uh, again, because it's a field. So it's difficult to expand that. You could, in theory, do everything with the reference module that we can do with the relation module. But since we approach the problem from two very different uh, viewpoints, uh, the solution looks very different. Uh, so we have a, a completely different way of storing this data. Uh, which is consistent no matter how the relation looks and uh, it's, as you can see it's also uh, very performant. So the uh, first example is the way that many of you probably have done this before. Uh, you have node A and you link to node B. This could be uh, for example an, uh, an article node linking to a um, some sort of kind of fact box. It could be a blurb for an article linking to the article. And this goes as the arrow shows, just one way. <coughs> now, if you have a binary relation, the relationship is going to look like this instead. You have the relation entity at the top, and then this relates in turn to both the to both node A and node B. And then afterwards, you can set if uh, you want this to be a directional um, relationship or if you want it to be symmetric. Uh, an example of a uh, symmetric relationship would be uh, a group of siblings where there is no, the, the relationship between, say, three siblings isn't going in any particular di direction. They just have this relationship and they are all equals within it. And this, uh, like we mentioned before, this the storage model for this is consistent so that <coughs> if you want to link up more, uh, for example, if you have three siblings or seven or even more of uh, a completely different uh, kind of object, you can just link as many of them as you want into this relation. And then uh, we have, uh, if, you, if you look at this one where we have, uh, if we say that you have four, uh, nodes that you want to link together, you need one relationship object and then you link all of them to it. If you would do uh, a symmetric relation with uh, the normal node reference, that would look something like this. And there is uh, no less than 12 uh, fields involved in connecting all of these, if all of them are going to be symmetric. So that uh, it becomes a mess if you want to extend it beyond uh, what it is currently doing yeah it basically it basically doesn't work it becomes a complete mess um, so what's really good about this uh, storage model then um, we have no change in the API to support all these different storage models um, binary binary how many you want directional bidirectional whatever you want so no change in the API it's a very consistent a API no change in the storage, uh, as I just mentioned. And we can also have a very consistent UI for, for dealing with all these different sorts of relations. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the UI. Uh, we're going to have a demo here uh, a little bit later. And the um, fourth pro problem that Letharian mentioned here is that the old way of doing references, you, you can't have any additional information on the relation itself. Um, and the solution for this is obviously now the relation is an entity. So now we can have whatever fields we want on the relation itself. You mentioned a very, very good use case about uh, Facebook friends 
You can have the type of relationship, friend, family, etc. Um, another example could be um, you have user entity, you have a party entity, and then you have a donation refer uh, relation in between them. A field on that re uh, relation could be amount that you donate, for instance. Um, so it becomes a really nice and consistent way of doing doing things. And some additional niceties that just happen basically. This was not the intention to solve, but that comes very natural with the whole thing is that integrates very well with D7. You could in theory do this in D D6 too, but it just plays very nice with the entity uh, model of doing things. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, we also have integration with Contrib. We have views integration. And we also have um, good basic rules integration that we're going to show you. Um, it's very, very API driven uh, at this point, and which is the intention with this module um, for very heavy custom stuff. Well, there's some UI too that we're going to show. Also, an, an another problem that I'm personally dealing with since I'm uh, maintaining the deploy module is that it makes content staging much easier. Um, content staging is something that Dries mentioned in his keynote that is something that's going to be emphasized in Drupal 8, a problem to solve. And why does it make the content staging mu much easier? Think about the scenario if you have the old uh, reference model uh, where you have two nodes. Um, and sometimes you want them to uh, reference to each other. Um, there are many cases y you might want that. And what that creates, uh, basically, is a circular dependency. Because what we have to do when we stage content is that we first move all the dependencies. So all the references needs to be deployed first before the main node can be deployed, OK? So here we have a very circular dependency. You can't move any of the nodes. Exposing an API could be tricky, etc. Here we have one relation entity in the middle. You can deploy all the nodes and then just deploy the relation entity after that. So it's, it makes content staging much easier. And um, also, it performs very well. Um, the views pr performance, Chicks can talk a little bit about that. So, uh, uh, if uh, this is just a more or less a footnote, but if somebody thinks of the storage model, uh, it looks fairly scary, uh, the query views generates for this, but uh, we have uh, actually uh, timed it, and despite the query looks uh, pretty scary, uh, it's uh, actually uh, n not a performance killer. Uh, there's a, the only cost uh, difference between using references and relation that you need to deal with one more join but it doesn't change uh, the how to say the type of the qu uh, query you are dealing with. Uh, if you only join to have uh, information on both uh, endpoints, uh, it's gonna be uh, equally performant. Uh, if you are filtering on both endpoints, then it's again going to be uh, equally performant, which uh, of course with SQL means that it is not going to perform at all. Uh, because that's the fundamental problem, right? That if you uh, join things together then you c uh, and filter both, then you cannot uh, really index those. Uh, I, I, I think the this was uh, uh, all that I wanted to mention about uh, views performance. Uh, we have a uh, uh, nice uh, views and rules uh, demo. Yes, and I'm going to do that here. Just need to arrange the mic a little bit. I hope you got all of that. Uh, no, I just need to uh, to clone the screen instead of doing the uh, uh, the presentation mode. Sorry. Uh, don't don't be mad. Don't be mean. I mean. Okay.
like I'm gonna have some play piano or something. Okay. Um, so w what I'm gonna demonstrate here is uh, three different things. First, I'm uh, gonna show the interface of how to create different relation types. Basically, how you create the different bundles, um, similar to how you create different content types of nodes. So that's the first thing I'm gonna demonstrate here. Um, so, on the structure, we have relation types, okay? Um, right now we have three different types of relations here. We have donation and a few test uh, relation types here. We can start by adding a new relation type here. Let's say we call that um, enlarge, okay? Turn off the overlay margin really. uh -huh. to use some more. Where do, where do you have the scroll? Plus. There you go. Is that better? A little bit? There you go. Okay, so adding a new relation type here. Um, first, we just want a label of the relation type. L let us say that we want to create a transaction. Uh, it could be a bank transaction or it could be anything. Um, we have a machine name automatically, automatically created here. Uh, we can make it directional if we want to. Um, and we have a reverse label here too. So we could say um, this could be transaction to bank. And if it's uh, directional, that's uh, transaction from user, for instance. We have a few different options here. Um, maybe you want to describe in detail. Chicks very, very quick here. Uh, maybe. No? Okay. Uh, these are not that important. Okay, part. okay. Um, here, you can, here you can choose the artery of the relation. We're going to keep it simple for now. Um, but here we also have the source bundles. Uh, what, what basically, what bundles can be the source bundle? And what bundles that will be the target bundles, okay? So in the transaction here, uh, we probably want user, for instance. Okay. Uh, to I donated. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a generic demonstration and then we're gonna show the donation relation. Uh, so just just to demonstrate here, uh, we actually don't have a node type for, for instance, bank here. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. So uh, what you could do uh, actually here, because uh, if you go down to the uh, bundles, uh, you can see a very interesting thing that the relation uh, types are also listed uh, as possibilities to relate to. You can create such things you, uh, because relation is an entity in itself. You can actually relate uh, uh, to that, uh, <coughs> uh, to a relation, which actually here is a, uh, a good use case because if you have a user which donates to a party, uh, then that donation can be linked uh, to a bank uh, saying that this was a bank transaction and that's uh, best described by actually relating to the donation uh, entity itself. So uh, this is uh, another uh, nicety of uh, relation uh, that 
uh, you can uh, exploit very nicely uh, that relation is just a, as an entity uh, as any other. Okay, so just to step back a little bit here, I'm just gonna demonstrate how the donation relation is set up here. Um, label, as I covered, it's directional for this one. Um, and the source bundle, the donation is coming from user. And uh, for we, for simplicity, just choose all node bundles. Probably you wanna choose the party bundle here, actually. But I'm not gonna change that at this point. Um, so that's the very basic settings you have to set up. So you need to figure out like, what kinds of relations you have on a site. Um, usually you just have fields for this, but here you need to think a little bit more what kinds or what types of relations you have. Okay? Um, and to demonstrate the... Um, To demonstrate the views integration here, I'm gonna show how we set up a few things first. So we here we have a party node. And we don't have a view here yet. Is that uh, is that gone? The view. Okay. Mm. Ah, okay, it's under donations, okay. Um, so here we have a uh, very basic uh, demonstration of the views integration. We have admin has uh, donated uh, twice to two parties, the Drupal comp party and another Drupal, uh, Drupal, uh, Drupal party, <laughs> as you see here. Um, and you see here, the int interesting thing here, we have amount. So the don donation here, the relation itself has amount. And uh, to see how that works. We go here, relation types. And for the donation um, relation type here, we can manage fields. And as you see here now, we have a field on this one, okay? Uh, and it's just a basic uh, text fi uh, integer field at this point. Works as any other integer field. Um, so you're probably f very familiar with this one here, uh, the settings here. Um, So that's the view. We can we can go in and look at the settings here. So there's one um, thing you need to uh, take in mind here when you create views with these kind of relations to it. Uh, you need to add, um, depends on your use case obviously, but here we have two relationships added to this view. One from, as we see here, from the user to the node itself, and then from the user, user to the relation, so we have the fields too, like the so we can show the amount uh, for the donation. Um, yeah. So uh, this one uh, is very new. I only uh, commented the, the user to relation a few days ago, and uh, this one is probably going to change in the future. We are uh, working together with the views maintainers on uh, figuring this one out because. It's a, it's a tricky problem to solve actually because uh, sometimes you just want to go from the user who donates to the party who have uh, uh, to donate it to. Uh, on the other hand, uh, other times you uh, want to stop uh, on the relation entity meanwhile, so you actually want to add user to uh, relation and then relation to party. Uh, but, the, uh, but the problem is going to be that if we uh, do the latter, then everybody will be forced to always have two relationships. That's how voting API works. It's not the end of the, the world after all. Uh, I am just a little bit reluctant uh, to force everybody to always use uh, two, rela uh, two relationships. So this is uh, still in a little bit of a flux. Okay, so that's uh, basically it for the views relation. Um, integration here. Um, most of you here are probably very familiar with the views interface and how you play around with the different relationships, so I'm not going to cover that in detail. Uh, but that's essentially what you need to do for now to uh, be able to extract the 
field information and, su and such from, from a relation. So we, we're work working on that, as Chips mentioned. Another thing I'm going to demonstrate here is the rules integration. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to set that up. And we go into configuration. OK, there you go. Um, we have workflow rules here. Um, so this is a little bit of a tricky one. So I'm assuming here now that you're familiar somewhat with how rules works. Um, I'm not going to go in very detail on everything, but so I hope you will follow me here. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a practical use case. We go I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the configuration and such, because that can be a little bit tricky. Um, so we have a, a rule here. User donated something. Um, I'm going to edit that. Um, use case here is now content is being viewed. We're triggering on that. So as soon as someone looks <laughs> at a party, that user automatically donates something, which is a pretty neat thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, we could set up conditions here, only um, party node. You probably want to do that. Uh, they are even donating, even if they are looking on pages here, even better. Um, so the setup here. It's a little bit tricky. Um, here we have some <coughs> debug code. We don't need to check on that. We can actually delete that one immediately. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so first thing we need to do um, is that we need to create uh, our array of endpoints. Okay. Um, so I'm talking a little bit uh, in. PHP or programming lingo here, but, but it, it will make sense here. So first thing we need to do is to add a variable. Um, and basically you have an action. I can show you how to add that. Add action. And it's basically the first thing you have here. Add, an, add a, um, let me see. Let me see, where do you have that? Yeah, yeah, add a variable. There you go. And the type of variable should be um, list of, where do we have that? Yeah, there. List of entity items. So that's the kind of variable you want to add first to create the array, basically. Um, we can edit this one here. So this is how, how it looks. The array f at this point is empty, okay? And the next step is to add an item to this array. So the first thing we do here is that we add the current user to that array. So the user that is logged in right now is first added to that array of what will be the endpoints of this relation. Um, the next thing you want to do is to add another item to your list of endpoints, okay? And in this case, it's the uh, node that we're viewing. And at this point, you have two entities in your uh, endpoint array. You could add different, even more nodes here. You could add, you could take in uh, nodes from different relations. You can you can play around here pretty much with the whole rules API. And I'm assuming that you're somewhat familiar with it at this point. So what we got now is that we have an array of endpoints, basically two two of them. I'm going to skip our, uh, skip our debug here. And then we have an action crea uh, called create a new entity. And, and this action here is provided by the entity API module. Um, and so we're adding, creating a generic entity, which happens to be a relation at this point. Uh, relation type, uh, donated to, and it also picks up our field API field here that we have for endpoints, which is the list of entities that we have here. Uh, so what this configuration now does is that it will save this relation with the provided endpoints that we have here. Um, the use case I'm demonstrating here is might not something that you would do on a production site or anything. Um, but that's the basic uh, 
how you're approaching the rules configuration with it. And it's it's pretty uh, it's exactly the same if if you would do it in code. Array of entities, you pass that into the save variable. We have a question question in the back, and I think we can take that now. So, so to repeat the question is that, um, do I have to add the source of the uh, of the relation as the first uh, item in in the uh, array or the endpoint array? Yes, that's true. Um, that needs to be the first w when it's directional, of course, because uh, then that's when it only makes sense. Okay, so that's true. Um, so that's the r basic rules integration. Uh, Klaus is going to demonstrate um, the relation block that we have um, to create uh, relations in a different way. So this is one way. You can do it programmatically. And Klaus is now going to demonstrate another way of creating relations. Uh, another question? Yeah. OK, yeah? Uh, Shik's going to answer that. So uh, I'm not surprised at that question because we uh, this is probably uh, the most popular uh, issue uh, in our issue queue. Uh, <laughs> first, the question is wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So sorry, I didn't repeat the question, which was, uh, uh, can you uh, add the relation from the node that it formed? Uh, the answer is that. Uh, yeah, uh, it, this is being worked on, but this is more often than not is the wrong way to think about things because relations are not part uh, of the uh, endpoint. They are a separate entity. Uh, and so if you are uh, creating uh, it from the uh, uh, endpoint entity creation screen, uh, then that's probably the wrong approach. Uh, I, I know that this is, uh, as I say, very popular, so this is being worked on. Uh, there's actually a code that I could say works somewhat. It's not tested yet. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have automated testing. Uh, it works enough, but uh, there are uh, several technological uh, challenges uh, in this. Uh, namely, uh, in Drupal 7, the entity uh, API, well, there was just not enough time to do everything and for example there's not really a way uh, to provide uh, a generic autocomplete uh, there is just no way because uh, because uh, the the way the entity API works uh, there is absolutely no guarantee that the label uh, of the uh, entity is going to be uh, a column in any uh, database so you cannot really uh, uh, find an entity based on a label. In case, for example, uh, relations, the relation entities do not have any label defined, uh, for example. Uh, user model, uh, for user, what we do is uh, we basically step outside of the entity API because user module already provides a user autocomplete, but the uh, user entity's label, if you look into the user entity definition, is created by theme username. So you cannot really uh, have a generic way. Uh, there is just no generic API for that, um, uh, basically. Uh, it just wasn't, it's just, it's just not done. So we are going to provide an autocomplete. It is going to work for some entities. It is not going to work for every entity uh, because that's impossible to do. Uh, it is going to cover about 80% of the cases. Uh, and of course, there is also the problem where uh, you want to uh, create uh, an entity with uh, several endpoints. We came up with a very different uh, UI which solves all these problems, which I'm uh, going to let uh, Klaus to uh, demonstrate that one. Well, uh, maybe I will say a few words before he demonstrates. So basically what we do here is that we realize that uh, the entities that you want to relate to, you probably have some way of finding them already 
We do not care how, but we presume that your site has a navigation or does the admin knows how to get there and we are reusing this. Uh, Klaus is going to show how. All right, so we have on the left side here a block called the entity collector and if we look at the list here we will see Drupal party and Drupal con party which uh, as was just mentioned we we have them here I have navigated to in this case just the front page which lists these two entities so I could now uh, pick uh, oh I'll have to do this in the reverse order actually if we're gonna create a new relation we'll go to user one also an entity so I have here user admin and I will add that to donated to I add user first because this is a directional uh, relation so user will be the source Hit pick and then I have in my picked entities list here user admin now if I go back to the front page I still sort of carry around this picked object, this entity from before. I can add, say, the DrupalCon party. Oh. Now I have these two here, and then uh, I could, if I wanted, um, if I wanted to add further, I could add as many uh, endpoints as I wanted, and then I click Create Relation, and then I get a new. Uh, relation. So, uh, oh, nice. I, wo <laughs> I wonder if that's our uh, rules integration or if it's a other rules bug. We'll have to look at that. So here we are uh, viewing the actual relation. Here we have the uh, amounts field, which we can add a value to. Can you say anything else about that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you have seen on the relation uh, and the edit screen, you uh, bring that back, please. The, the edit screen. Uh, you cannot actually edit the relation itself. Uh, this is something that we uh, debate heavily right now. Uh, how do we continue with this? But traditionally, th uh, there is not really any point uh, in editing an entity, uh, uh, editing uh, a relation, because if you need to edit it, that is actually going to be a different relation. Uh, at most, what you want is delete the old one. Uh, for example, uh, if two people are married, they divorce and remarry, that's definitely not going to be the same uh, entity, right? Oh yeah, that w those one can. The fields can be edited. The endpoints cannot be edited. The fields absolutely can be. That's uh, that's a very valid uh, point. Yes, uh, the uh, do that's that's a different thing. It's the endpoints that you cannot edit. Yes, uh, that's uh, one of uh, the problems with this, that uh, mistakes are hard to correct uh, if you uh, don't allow editing. Uh, but allowing editing is gets really, really tricky, uh, to be honest, because uh, 
due to the problem uh, with uh, entity selection, uh, it's it's uh, untrivial basically. Uh, what we could do U UI wise, probably maybe, uh, two things. One uh, that we after all uh, are going to have uh, a field uh, edit widget on the let's say on the node screen, right, where you can uh, create a, a relation after all. So there we might uh, want to allow editing. The other one that we could do is that you pick an entity, go to the screen, uh, go go to the relation entity view screen, and there you can say replace uh, this one with the one that you have picked. The other thing that I was uh, considering is to create relation types uh, to add another flag to the relation type, which is editable. the The relation type itself uh, would be editable or not. Uh, because I believe that it's good to actually lock down. Uh, so most of the cases you don't really want to edit. Next question. Okay, before we can take any more questions, I can. I just want to mention some some quick things here. So, chicks are recovered here. Uh, some bits of it. We're looking into creating a widget for it, for um, doing relations. Um, we have even more view support coming, so that's almost done. Um, another project that we want to look into is also replacing, because um, in core we have all sorts of different types of relations, um, and everything is implemented in its own way. Everything works differently. So have a very consistent relation model in core would be something that we probably want to have. Uh, so we are probably going to look into that. Um, another thing that uh, we've been thinking of is also um, entity hierarchy module. Uh, imagine having uh, hierarchies as entities and you can provide more information to that uh, entity too. Well, uh, sorry, but uh, in here, the entity hierarchy, uh, the problem is that in core, for example, you have uh, taxonomies where the taxonomy terms uh, have their own way uh, to provide a hierarchy between entities. You have uh, comments doing it a different way. You have books doing it a third way. So uh, there is no doubt that it would be great to come up uh, with a, a consistent way to handle hierarchies. But that's a different problem space. And because relation creates entities, if somebody comes up with an entity hierarchy module, which I'm not saying that it's not going to be us, uh, then relation is going to slot into that one really nicely. Uh, but that's not the not a problem that relation wants or needs to solve. Uh, it's a really, really uh, hard to solve issue. On the other hand, relation was also something that seemed impossible for a uh, very long time until we came up with this uh, a weird idea of uh, adding an intermediary uh, entity. So it is possible that we will be able to come up with something, but I can tell you that uh, entity hierarchy in general is extremely hard. Uh, and, uh, and if you go with the textbook ways, it's not really doable with the uh, databases that we work with. Uh, and it's literally the textbook. Uh, Vadim Tropashko has uh, a chapter uh, on uh, storing trees uh, in uh, SQL uh, in his book. But neither of these are going to work uh, with MySQL. The guy works for Oracle. So you can guess uh, what those solutions work with. But there are no other solutions, really. Uh, so questions about relation, not hierarchy questions. I'm not taking hierarchy questions. <laughs> You were the first. Uh, the, the, uh, there's UI. Uh, the storage could handle it. Uh, yeah. So the question was uh, why you cannot uh, edit relations. Uh, it's UI and it's concept. Uh, there is nothing in the storage model that would stop it. Uh, the endpoints uh, are just a field on the relation entity. So if, if a field API perfectly uh, supports uh, updating uh, fields, uh, and so that's absolutely possible. I'm just, 
I'm just really excited to, to, to do it. But I guess that people are going to come with me because they have after a come with me to provide a widget uh, on the node that it's screen to uh, create a relation, which I was absolutely uh, unwilling to do for a long time. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, uh, what I said is that uh, please take the survey. It's extremely important for uh, future DrupalCons, whether uh, if we were if we really stuck here, they shouldn't uh, let us uh, ruin a, another DrupalCon. <laughs> so please take the survey. You c you can already do this with rules, by the way. Mikkel? Okay. Don't even ask. <laughs> uh, we uh, uh, so the question was, uh, what about permissions? Uh, this is an extremely gnarly issue because. Uh, that's another thing that entities do not really solve at this moment. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just insanely hard, you know. Uh, you, you have a, a relation uh, with even just two endpoints. What, what uh, is the module uh, supposed to do if you cannot if you do not have access to one of the endpoints, is this going to immediately uh, deny uh, access uh, to the relation? So I would suspect that that's not what people want because it is possible, for example, that uh, you could uh, subscribe, you could log in, and then suddenly the other endpoint would become visible. So people probably want uh, uh, to be able to reach the relation entity screen and say you need to do this or that uh, to be able to reach the other endpoint. Uh, so that probably shouldn't deny uh, access to the relation. On the other hand, uh, for other use cases, it is definitely possible that if one of the endpoints are access denied, then you do need to uh, deny access to the relation. So that's one problem. Two, uh, aside from concepts, uh, there is absolutely no entity access system. There is no consistent entity access system at all, uh, which would uh, make this endeavor uh, very hard. Uh, Damien and I, Damien especially, is planning to fix some of this uh, on Friday at the code sprint, because uh, this can be viewed as a security issue uh, against Drupal 7 that you just don't have a consistent entity access way. So the question is very real, and uh, what can I say? Uh, hmm, hmm. Um, <laughs> not much. <laughs> so, um, so you only have one array of endpoints. <coughs> uh, yeah, re repeat the question. Um, Yuan asked if, if um, it was required to have two arrays. Is that correct? W why not two arrays? Well, we only have one. Um, the thing here is that we want sy symmetry. It, it should be symmetric. The relation should be symmetric. So we only have one array of endpoints. Uh, so that's the fundamental problem that we're trying to solve with the, with the module. Uh, to be it, the relation itself should be symmetric. Um, hmm? And if you... Um if you had a different, we want to avoid having a different way of creating directional relationships. We want it to be con as consistent as possible. So you, that's why we only want one array. And then in the special case of a directional one, the first element is the source. Okay. 
Okay. S yes. So the question was, do we plan to do a anything where you have a graph? The uh, answer is a very definite yes. Uh, Common Torben uh, has a graph API module which has relation uh, integration already. Awesome. So you can actually draw those graphs already. Uh, and there is an open issue to provide an API for this. So the question is most definitely yes. Uh, half of it is already works. So it's uh, yes, very, very much yes. Johan again? No, uh, this one uh, uh, is using, uh, as I said, endpoints are fields. So whatever field storage engine you want to use, uh, be it uh, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, uh, PBS, I don't care, I don't care. I'm storing endpoints as fields as, uh, exactly uh, for the reason you have mentioned, so that we can use uh, any database that you want with this. No more questions? Okay. Uh, so RDF exposure. There's an open issue for that uh, as well. Uh, patches are welcome. I'm not going to do it. If somebody else is doing it, uh, you are most welcome. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it seems that we, we ran out of time, so thanks for attending. Please uh, fire in the survey.